morning. Welcome back to the boat. This morning I've got a Montgomery M17 in my shop here and I'm getting ready to lift it off the trailer and get the trailer out from under it. I've got to inspect the uh, uh, the swing keel and I've got to do a little bit of work on the trailer as well. But uh, just wanted to bring a couple things to your attention here. One thing that I always do whenever I lift these boats up <clears throat> that I may not have mentioned before, but it's important. And another one of my um, viewers uh, mentioned it to me and I always do it, but I, have my, I may not have mentioned it. So I, I wanted to uh, uh, show you here. I've got a line tied from both of these uh, lifting straps uh, from uh, you know from front to back so that these uh, lifting straps can't slide up the, the bottom of the boat and you know and dump the boat on the floor this boat here is flat enough on the bottom to where it uh, would be almost impossible for it to slip but just as a good precaution I always do that and in the last video where I lifted a compact 16 this same this is a green line I might, may have mentioned that it's a blue line but it's actually a green line here uh, it wasn't visible in the video because it was up here, uh, right right here at the uh, uh, rub rail on that boat, and you may not have seen it, and I didn't mention it, but I do always tie these together so that they can't, you know, sp splay apart and, and slide up the, you know, the bottom of the boat. Uh, some boats are worse than others. Uh, some boats that have a really uh, pronounced cutaway forefoot or whatever this forward strap in particular a lot of times can slide forward and so you want to tie them together anyway just wanted to mention that you know for safety I am set up here to be able to pick up 8,000 pounds safely the most I've ever lifted with this setup is about a little over 6,000 pounds maybe 6,500 pounds but it's it's rated for 8,000 pounds this boat here with the stuff that's in it, it's probably only about 1,500 pounds. So these boats are not like crazy, crazy heavy. Um, but uh, this boat is about 1,500 pounds, maybe 1,600 because there's some odds and ends inside the boat, but certainly less than 2,000 for sure. It's, it's 15, 1,600 pounds. So I'm going to lift it and just get enough to get the trailer out from under it, roll the trailer out from under it, block the keel, put jack stands under it, like you know, like I typically do. I do work by myself almost all the time, so sometimes I do things that might be marginally questionable because I'm, you know, working by myself. But like I say, you do what you got to do, and you're responsible for your own safety. And if you don't feel comfortable doing something, don't do it. Now, because I've got a four-point system, I have to go from corner to corner and uh, work them uh, together. I've already got the front of the boat the lifted off the trailer just that little bit. Like I say, because I've got uh, having to lift with four points, I have to work from chain to chain to lift it. it it's uh, it's not a bad way to do it. It's not quite as convenient as just being able to push a button or something. But uh, but you do have to work from corner to corner, try to you know keep it kind of level as you're lifting it, that kind of thing. Because it will, as you go from corner to corner, it kind of swings back and forth ever so slightly. So I just do a little bit at a time. 
but the boat is already off the trailer. My my swing keel is still resting, uh, just the tiniest bit. So at this point, the boat is off of the trailer. It's you know it's it's completely swinging free right there. But it's just clearing the trailer by about two inches. And what I'm gonna do now is get inside the boat with the ladder, get up there. And I need to tighten up the uh, center board a little bit. Okay, I've got it clearing completely now by two, about two or three inches. So I should be able to just pull the trailer out. This is a 1982 model Montgomery 17, which means that it still has the iron swing keel instead of the fiberglass one which is why I wanted to lift the boat and uh, put that keel down because I'm sure I'm gonna need to clean it good and, and recoat it with a, a, some kind of epoxy paint and that kind of thing. Just make sure that the cavity's clear of barnacles or zebra mussels or anything like that. That should be good right there. And it's, you know, with a boat that only weighs this much with these chain hoists, it's almost effortless to pick the boat up but you still have to be careful to go slow and methodical and you know make sure nothing's going to catch you by surprise don't have a lot of room for my blocking to catch the keel because of that swing keel it takes up just about the full length of the thing so uh, once I get it on the blocks and you know, I'll put the jack stands under it You can see what I've got. I've got jack stands chained together, and then I've got hard solid blocking to either end of the keel. There's not a lot of keel for the boat to rest on because of that center uh, swing keel. It takes up almost the whole trunk there area, so it's uh, just at the very ends that I can support it, but it's still supported good. That leaves me room to, to work on that swing keel. And I have access to the to the uh, pivot bolt and the whole bit. You know, I can take that out and take the whole swing keel out if I need to at this point. I still have to put a safety chain on those back uh, jack stands, but other than that, it's done. Okay, so I've got this uh, center board all the way down. Actually, it's slightly lower than that. Right there is the stop. Uh, pin right there but it appears that the little stop flat area that was made into the original cast cast iron keel has snapped off so there is no stop on it which is a bit of a problem um, I'll have to weld a piece back on or something and uh, a little bit tricky welding cast iron but that's pretty thick there should be able to do a, do a decent job of it just preheat it and all that and uh, weld, weld a chunk back in there. I'll have to get it out and just see what I can do, but I'm glad that I s 
did drop it down far enough to see that because uh, this is a 170 pound swing keel, cast iron swing keel. You don't want it suspended just from the pennant only. It's just a little bit too much weight. I mean, the rope will carry it, but the you know the, the rope would uh, the pennant line would, uh, which I think in this boat I think it's five sixteenths double brag, but it would uh, it would wear a whole lot faster, you know, with that 170 pounds hanging off of it continually while you're sailing. So I got to have to do something to come up with a way to to uh, correct that problem where that piece is broken off. Okay, I just knocked together out of some scrap, just a, a real quick little deal here to um, to keep that thing from laying over. That should do it. It's, as long as I keep it vertical, it won't be much pressure on it. This other side over here, I'll put on from the other side of the uh, centerboard. That way I don't have to lift, raise and lower the centerboard twice. Since it's already down, I'll just leave it down. And uh, put that in place on the other side so it'll be like that when this drops down it'll be um you know completely uh captured by that uh that triangular uh gusset there so that uh that should keep it from flopping over that's all i'm trying to do is just keep it from flopping over when it comes down when I knock the pins out. Okay, so I've got the centerboard lowered down onto the wood and got the little cradle thing uh, made to capture it vertically. And now I've just got to go find a, a quarter inch uh, rod or something I can use to knock out these pivot bolts and all. It looks like I have got just exactly enough room between my block and, I mean, like down to like the eighth of an inch for it to actually come out. I will have to lift the boat up some more, as you can see here, to get it all the way out. But I'm actually using the boat to my advantage right now to keep it captured until I've got it under control. Then I lift the boat out, pull this out, put the boat back straight back down on my block. Okay. Okay. Okay, that gives me about an inch of clearance. And in case anybody's wondering, you need like 27 inches to get one of these things out. Whether that's digging a trench under your boat or whatever it takes. That pendant is fairly new. Pennant, I think is how you pronounce it actually, pennant. Spelled like pendant, but pronounced like pennant. All right, let's see what I can do here. Okay, so I got it out safely. Got it in a cradle where I can slide it around until I can get it up on a bench and work on it. Right there's the keel out. And this 
and actually in pretty good shape. It's not really bad corroded at all. The only issue is that little uh, bump out right there that hits the stop. Actually, it's here, I guess. Uh, right here it was a, a little bump out that uh, creates a stop when it comes down. Is uh, broken off. You can actually see the rusty metal right there where it broke off. Uh, the edges being rusty is not a big deal. The face of it's not pitted or rusty at all, but I, somebody may have epoxied it before. I don't know. Um, but it uh, looks like it's in relatively good shape other than that. So, got to do a little bit of thinking about how to repair that. I'm going to get up underneath here and look in the slot and just see what kind of condition things look like to see underneath here. If I can. And it actually looks really good in here. It's nice and clean. I don't know whether you can see that with this camera or not, but it's um, very clean. So I will work on that a little bit, but it's not going to need a whole lot of work there. My, this is the stop pin that uh, I haven't knocked out yet, but that's the issue right there, is that little piece of cast iron catches on that and broke it off. <laughs> 